<laughs> All right. I want to welcome everybody to you guys are here at night and not only eight o'clock at night. Um, Billy, he is from London. He's up at one o'clock in the morning. So I'm excited for what's going to happen tonight. How are you going to learn? I love TechSoup. I love sharing. I love seeing nonprofits grow. Happy National Women's Month to all the ladies who are here tonight. Yay. <laughs> I love it. And we even got a man clap and I love it. I love it. I love it. So as um, Eli said, my name is Aretha Simons. I do want to remind you that the, the I want to say webinar, but the Zoom tonight is being recorded and those who register will receive it at least 48 hours after tonight. I want to introduce you to my guest tonight. Her name is Tammy Buckner. Tammy is the founder of Techquity Digital. I love that name, like equity, but Techquity is a technology solution company specializing in software and application development. But she also has a nonprofit herself. She is the executive director and the co-founder of We Code KC. It's a nonprofit organization that exposes young adults in underserved and urban communities to develop technology concepts, coding, cybersecurity, and they do hands-on projects. Now, Tammy is going to talk about a lot of things tonight, but the main thing and the main reason you're here is to find out how you can make your nonprofit a sustainable nonprofit. So I'm going to share my screen and Tammy's going to do her presentation for us tonight. So give me a moment while I set that up. I do want to remind you to, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat room and I'll be able to read the questions. And like I said, if we don't have um, a big crowd, people are still coming in, then I'll just let you ask, you know, bring you live and let, let you ask. Tammy, can you see my screen? Everybody can see my screen. You can unmute yourself. Yes, ma'am, I can. All right. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate this platform. I appreciate everyone being here this evening on a Tuesday evening. So thank you, Aretha. Thank you, Eli. Uh, again, my name is Tammy Buckner. I am the CEO and founder of Techwity Digital, which is a technology solutions company. Um, as Aretha um, said, we offer project management, um, customized software development, web and mobile development for our um, clients. Um, I have been a in technology pretty much most of my life, um, which is what drove me to start a nonprofit organization called We Code KC because of my passion for technology. Growing up in tech, as you know, it is more a um, more of a male dominated industry, and I didn't see people that look like me. I didn't see mentors that look like me or anyone that could assist me in my journey in technology. I did not want that to continue or be the norm for other young girls that look like me, other young boys, or even the urban core of students that was interested in technology. This is why I started my nonprofit. And as many of you know that have nonprofits, nonprofits often start with a passion, often start with there could be some type of gap that you wanted to fill. This is, was the gap that I wanted to fill. I wanted to make sure that students in the urban core could get exposed to technology, to cybersecurity, as well as um, ways to create a sustainable career for themselves. Because if they don't see people that look like them, they wouldn't feel that they could actually do or be a part of technology. So hence, We Code uh, KC started two years ago in the community of Kansas City, where we literally started in different communities, just um, doing different pop-up sessions that would allow students to gain access to technology. As we were growing, um, businesses started contacting us to see how they can help. One of the ways that we figured out how they could help the organization not only stand up on its own two feet to be sustainable, was to actually pay for the services that the students were actually developing, which that created a huge model um, to show that a nonprofit can actually be sustainable. And that's why I feel um, I, I can help with that process today. 
I have worked with many, many different nonprofits from small to large, brand new to old nonprofits. Um, and that has given me a clue and an idea of how nonprofits start and how their business model um, function. Uh, next slide. So by no means any one model um, works for all models. Because we are here, we know that there is a broad range of people that are here, not only that are here today, but also that would look at this webinar at a later point in time. So I'm not saying that I am the expert of all experts, but I am giving my opinions in ways that I have learned to work with large nonprofits and small nonprofits and observe their models and how they can actually uh, build out that model. So a little bit of facts about nonprofits. Uh, there's over 1 million nonprofits worldwide. And when we look at nonprofits, we realize that nonprofits do everything from feeding to healing to shelter, educating, especially inspiring and enlightening everyone. Nonprofits normally touch every gender, every age, every race, and every socioeconomic status uh, from coast to coast and border to border. So I applaud nonprofits because they are truly the, um, the it fosters civic engagement and leadership. I, it truly is the sector that brings all businesses and industries together. We strengthen communities every single day. Um, so, so kudos to those that have started nonprofits and that are building those nonprofits out. Next slide. So all, we're here today to talk about what does nonprofit sustainability really mean? That even as I was talking to my um, business partner and co-founder, that definition is it changes and it's different among so many people. And I just listed a few because different definitions for what sustainable, number one, what does sustainable mean, but then also a nonprofit sustainable, what does that mean? Some people could say that it is being self-sufficient, that um, you don't need, or being self-sufficient through earned income or sources. As I said, we code has been sustainable by using um, sources or one of the ways that we've been sustainable by using income that the kids bring in from developing websites. That's one way or one definition of uh, nonprofit sustainability. Another de definition could be the ability to attract multi-year unrestricted funds. A lot of nonprofits do get a chance to um, attract government funds that they continue year after year without sometimes even applying, but just continue to get these funds year after year. One other definition is funding nonprofits full cost. Um, that's including direct and indirect costs. But um, those are just some of the ways that, you know, or, or some of the definition of nonprofits. So next slide. So my definition definitely encompasses all of that. Most importantly, and what it means a nonprofit organization is to accomplish to develop a smart strategy and business model to use diverse funding as a mechanism to actually make that happen. What that really means is, number one, you have to know what your, what your nonprofit, oh, sorry, next slide. Sorry about that, Aretha. You have to know what your, next, your nonprofit, why does it exist? And what do you want to accomplish? Next slide. So most importantly, standing up your nonprofit with your core values, your mission, your objective, and your strategies. It's, it takes five minutes for a person to set up a nonprofit. That's in just documentation. So when it comes to the strategy of a nonprofit, you have to make sure to be sustainable. A nonprofit must articulate the long-term outcome of what they're ultimately trying to accomplish. So when you're talking about your strategy, when you're talking about your mission statement, your goals and your values, all those must be articulated so that you can to express why you exist. Again, when I talk about WeCode KC and why it exists, I decided I wanted to fill a void. 
I wanted to fill a void that I had personally myself that not only myself, but I also saw others see that there were no other people in that sector um, to fill that gap. So you want to accomplish, um, you want to ultimately articulate that, um, that value, that objective and that business model and strategy so that you can accomplish as a um, social change agent. Next slide. So who will help you carry out this mission? So think about um, your leadership team, your board, and you may also have volunteers and especially mentor, uh, excuse me, mentors, volunteers, your staff, and likely an advisory board. So it's not to simply um, plan your future, but you must figure out what all of those mean to you and how they can assist you to accomplish your goal, what your staff can do, what your board and your volunteers. And as Eli mentioned earlier about your technology, TechSoup is a great resource that would allow you to pull um, your technology together. Not even businesses, let alone a nonprofit, have a very difficult time with finding the correct technology to help their businesses run. And later on in our slides, I'll also share with, with you some other resources that you can use for your nonprofit to help you with your technology, your marketing, and other resources to bring your entire strategy to fruition. So articulating your business model, you would likely employ and you will likely correspond with the monies not only to staff your, your, um, your staff that will work with you and also your board, but once you realize your long-term goals, then you'll start looking at what those funds and what those monies look like to help you achieve that long-term uh, goal that you're seeking. Next slide. So one of my favorite topics to talk about is obviously funding your nonprofit organization. So some of the resources, let me skip a few slides, okay. Some of the resources to diversify your, um, your, your nonprofit is earn income. Earn income could be when you, when you look at the products and you look at the services that your nonprofit has that the public is interested in purchasing, you can utilize that as a funding resource. Obviously grants, which many times, this is why people start nonprofits because there are grants available to assist you to keep that um, mission and that value going. But it's not, um, then of course, there's also events. Events would allow you to set up different um, funding sources. People can actually pay to come to the events and then of course, sponsorship. It's not enough to figure out what it's going to cost to actually run your nonprofit, but you have to figure out the other side of how to bring all of that money into the door. So having a smart um, financial strategy attracts different monies so that you can fit all of the, um, the different sources for, that will fit for your organization. So most importantly, you're looking at the, how the money flows to the organization whether you are using those government grants or fundraisers or events and to and also you know private sources as well having that mixed um, income or that earned income and utilizing your um, financial model that will align with all of your core competencies uh, let's see next slide okay there we go you got it already thank you um, so as i talked about a little bit earlier um, the different there's multiple resources out for nonprofits that would allow you to not only help with your technology. Again, TechSoup is a huge organization that I have used for many, many years that has allowed me to reduce my cost. Um, I've used them for hardware, purchasing computers that will help our students. Obviously, we, we have students that come from urban cores. Many times they don't have the technology in their home to um, to get exposed or to um, work on the projects. So we're purchasing even hardware from TechSoup that would assist as well as getting donations um, to help the students. And then also the software that's on uh, TechSoup that is a discounted, very discounted rate. So imagine picking up a Microsoft or an Adobe program that is slashed at like less than half percent for your for your nonprofit. 
And if you've ever used Canva, Canva is an amazing um, marketing tool that would allow you to create everything from business cards to flyers, to posters, to social media posts. Um, there is a Canva for nonprofit. A lot of people didn't know that. You must be registered as a 501c3 to utilize this platform and it is discounted and um, most of them, most of the services are free as well. LinkedIn for nonprofits is a platform. We know LinkedIn is utilized for businesses, whereas now if you go to uh, nonprofit.linkedin.com, this is a platform that would allow you to share out many, um, not only if you're looking for funding, but also sending out articles and talking about your nonprofit and sharing that out with other nonprofits, basically to be a collaboration. One thing I know about, uh, one thing that's interesting about collaboration, because you may have another nonprofit pretty much doing the exact same thing that you're doing. One of my challenges that I challenge out to other people and myself, that when there's a, another nonprofit, not looking at that as a competitor, but as a collaborator. And this is where you can find a lot of collaborations on LinkedIn for nonprofits so that, you know, there's they may have one resource and you have another resource and coming together to collaborate figures out, you know, another advocate to um, to help with the community. And one of the last resources that I really like personally is Questions Pro. That is a platform that allows nonprofits to um, pick up different um, surveys from your platform or from your network. A lot of times we need to hear from our network what they're needing, what their desires are, what um, they're looking for. And one way to do that is going to Questions Pro, questionpro.com, allow nonprofits to set up surveys um, that's pretty much free um, so that you can um, um, reach out to your network and utilize that. Let's see. Next slide. Okay, that was pretty fast. Did I go through that that fast? You were great. <laughs> you were great. <laughs> you were great. Thank you. So that was that was really good. And I I haven't heard of Questions Pro. So that's a new one for me. And you mentioned on um, LinkedIn. I got an email from somebody from LinkedIn wanted to collaborate. And I was like, I don't know you, but people are finding people to collaborate. And then when I read their email, I was like, oh, okay. Well, okay, yeah. sure, we can collaborate. So Absolutely. that was a good one. So let me go in here and see questions. I saw a lot of things coming in. Um, Billy said, what sort of market niches do you see nonprofits using as a way of developing a sustainable business? Wow, and that's a really good question because there's so many different niches out there um, that can create that. And what I've normally seen, definitely technology, but any um, platform or any nonprofit that offers services, what the community is looking for, that's the most important. Because if you have services that can that the community wants to purchase, that would be very important, um, a niche that can build that sustainable model. Yeah, and like you said, there's so many different types of nonprofits. So, so your, yours, you have a you have a great one. You deal with computers, so they can you know build websites. But if you have a feeding program, they may not they may not be able to sell food, but they may have a thrift store that they can sell clothes to bring in more money to um, buy more food. Exactly. Um, there's another question um, from Billy. What do you see as the differences between nonprofits and social enterprises? He says it may be that it's just a difference in terminology between the UK and mm. the USA. Yeah, I think social enterprise is more so feeding into nonprofits or helping build up nonprofits. That's the way I see because it's, and I think it, it, it can be intertwined, but it's actually feeding and building into uh, nonprofits to build those nonprofits up. Awesome. Oh, great, Billy. You dropped a couple of links in here for um, people to see founderscode.com and a couple other links, you guys can um, copy those. Um, B Beeler says, I love your programming, but sadly I need to sign off. Okay, she had to do with some parental deals, but thank you so much. Um, she will get this as I'm gonna mention this again, everybody will get this recording within 48 yeah. hours. Um, Billy just tried looking at TechSoup website. 
sorry, my mouse. That's techsoup.org. Um, it doesn't seem to be active. Oh yeah, techsoup.org. Org. I'm sure you found it by mm -hmm. now. That's yep. definitely active. <laughs> um, and they've or, been around for so, so many years. Okay, Very good. few people know that. Okay, anybody else have any questions, comments, feedback? Um, did you get a lot? Put number one in the chat room. If you got a lot, you learned something, put some ones in there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Stephanie, Tammy, how do you feel about leveraging the TechSoup account with Google Ad Grants and Google My Business to drive traffic? Very good question. I am just, just this week, I have been working with one of my clients on setting them up with Google, um, the entire Google business suite. And because they are a nonprofit, we were able to get them set up through TechSoup and then utilize um, the um, platform. And I believe it was, it was, I'm not going to quote the what the cost was from Google, but it can definitely work to drive that traffic because once you set up the ads through Google and then utilize your so, social media platform, it would allow you to pick up those analytics. You can use the tag manager to set those up on all of your social medias, your website, and to drive that traffic and continuing to keep that up. I normally suggest people to... Um, renew that or up make those changes quarterly it's free okay awesome. thank you stephanie yeah uh, but definitely make those changes with those algorithms um quarterly because google changes consistently and you want to make sure that um, you're updated with those mm -hmm. um what about open source software um, what is the, I don't know if there's a about question, is, there, is yeah. there another part question of that about question what about using open software? What do you mean yeah. by that? I think using open source software is great, um, because you can customize it to your needs. Um, there's always code that's already there, obviously. And then once you take that code and implement it to the requirements that you use specifically for your processing, I think it works great. Uh, we use open source software all the time um, because that platform is already there. We work with our clients to find out what their requirements are and their processes are on a daily basis. And then we form that um, software to their needs. It cuts out costs because now we're not finding a, um, a customized software. We can start with the base and then utilize their process and um, customize that software to their needs. So it definitely saves costs and time. Nice, nice. Anybody else have any questions for Tammy or anything about TechSoup or any of the other platforms that she mentioned? Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. So what, um, Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much, Stephanie. So what um, industries of, of nonprofits do we have with us today? Are you type your nonprofit in the chat room and let us know if you're an executive director. Yes. I'm not tech savvy, so some of this is foreign. That's okay. <laughs> Oh, um, Tammy, do you operate? Do you um, operate a nonprofit though? Tanja, excuse me, not Tammy. Tanja, Tanja. Mm -hmm. do you have a nonprofit? Yes, you do. Okay. okay. Well, I understand that a lot of non, you know, nonprofit. Oh, good, good, good. You're a founder, both for for profit and nonprofit. Um, to me, I see that. A lot, a lot of nonprofits or individuals say they're not tech savvy. As we know, we are going to be using technology to the end of days. So this is a great opportunity for you to, you know, log on. Good, you are executive director TechSoup, and look at some of the. There are a lot of free classes. There are a lot of free seminars and webinars on TechSoup. A lot of free classes. A lot of grant writing classes. A lot of free things as well. So it's not all. Um, do to deal with the hardware and software, but there's a lot of training that goes on, on with it. And it's, it's, it really would help you if you would, you know, get familiar with it because we are not getting away from technology. Um, Billy, you said um, TechSoup 
has um, large partners, large corporations providing, yeah, proprietary software. That is true because TechSoup itself is a nonprofit 501c3. And so there are a lot of large organizations as they do in everything, whether they're a foundation or, or a family foundation or a community foundation, they have something called social responsibility. And so they don't have time to come and find you and you and you and you and all of us. So they'll give it to one large organization or corporation that can can that has the capacity to disseminate the information and the software to you know individuals or to corporations. So this is this is you know a great platform that I think TechSoup has. And again, a lot of large corporations they do find us, and you know we can get the word out faster than I can or you can to thousands of nonprofits. I don't know if they work with partners with open source software companies. I don't know what open source, can you tell me what open source software companies are? So let me unmute you, give me one second. And let, let me um, go, uh, okay. Michael, you are an ass assistant technologies for people with disabilities, yes, wow. You're working on setting up one, F fantastic, okay. Um, okay, she has a website she's trying to utilize, um, also use a Facebook as an open, another source. Good, you definitely wanna to come to the social media um, one that we have. Um, and then, good, good, Just great. People are putting in a lot of great links in here. Yes. William, I'm working on, I'm working with three. One is a church and one are two other workforce oriented organization. I love to talk to someone about strategies to help them create events, classes and help them become more self-sufficient. Awesome. Also plan to start my own soon. Fantastic. Okay, awesome. Let me see if I can um, unmute uh, Billy so we can find out what he means by open source. Billy, you are unmuted. Okay. Um open source okay. software um, companies. Um, oh, um, have a look for a company called Red Hat, for example. Mm, yep. Um, Red, Red Hat Software, um, what was it, Ubuntu, for example, or Canonical. Yes. Uh, being the, um, those are both pro uh, providers of operating systems, mm -hmm. along with a whole, so, um, a large a whole, a whole range of software tool chains that right. can be used for run running any large organization. Right. Okay. Um, um, basic idea behind so behind um, open source soft. Well, uh, what's it? Liberty Libra soft software Libra as a as a will as for um, free has more than one meaning. Yeah. Uh, it's free as in beer, as in t uh, as in <laughs> uh, cash value, but also free as in liberty. Yeah. As in you yeah. get to do what you want with it. Exactly. Uh, the original the the liberty was the originally more emphasized. Uh, back in the back in the mid eighties, when this uh, when this software movement started, okay. um, basically bef before that point, if you bought a machine, you got given a copy of the source code, and yeah. you got given a copy um, so that you could pay a programmer that was looking after maintaining your systems uh, to sit there and write the software that you needed. Um, okay. Then what happens is as 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 microcomputers and desktop be computers became more com uh, more common. That's the point when uh, people started saying, well, okay, we're going to produce software, um, but we're not going to uh, get, hand the source, source code. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, what what the, I do the, is a... The thing, open, sorry, the, the thing with open source software is that it's returned to the original way that computers use, the computer markets used to operate. Yeah, a computer was a tool, and if you didn't have the software, you couldn't do the job. That it yeah. was, um, and that's, so that, um, that's one thing that... One, what, um, sorry, uh, sorry, I, okay. I did forget to say I have really, really bad ADHD. Oh, so okay. um, if I do get, ramble off on tangents, please feel free with, to grab the, uh, grab hold of the steering wheel of the conversation. Well, I, I got it now. When you, when you start explaining that, I wanted to know what open source software is. Now I get it. Yeah. I will say that um, any company that wants to have their, software, hardware, or whatever technology on TechSoup platform, they go through a process to apply. So um, imagine anybody, you know, could apply. Um, but Red Hat and Ubuntu that you mentioned, those are, you can go directly to their website and download their framework. 
So that's a framework that's free. And then you utilize that actually to build out um, content management systems. And so that is free that you don't have to go through TechSoup to actually get that, that framework. So yeah, I'm glad you knew that. Thank you, Tammy. That's why you're the expert in this area. And I also want to mention like what you see on that main page, you see a lot of the big companies, but if you look further there, there are over a hundred companies. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's much bigger than what you see on the surface. Um, good, people are posting links in here. Great. Love that. Um, awesome, Michael, you developed, um, you, this is current tech you develop for first responders. Awesome. Wow. You got to guys click on that YouTube link and check that out. Especially we're going to get his views up. There you awesome. go. Awesome. I love that Claudine, you're a CEO and founder of Beyond Conquest Ministry. I love that. We help women in women's shelter. Fantastic. We also help women in Africa. Wow. Find jobs beyond conquest.org. Yeah. Everybody put in your links in here. This is fantastic. Well, we have a lot of, TechSoup have a lot of um, NGOs um, in Africa. So it, it'd be great if you can connect with some of those and maybe get on some of their meetup groups because mm -hmm. they have webinars and Zooms just like we did tonight. So this is good. Awesome. Um, wow. Great comments, great comments. And everybody said they love your presentation. I think you did a fantastic job as thank well, you. Tammy. Now everybody says, thank you for the resource. Awesome. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I might mess it up. Um, Constantino. Hello, everyone. Uh, what is the first step I should take when I am the only Mm. probably only one in the thought process of starting a nonprofit. I don't know exactly where to start. So that's a great question. I will tell you uh, from experience because I've helped thousands of people start their nonprofits. You should definitely um, find the people who you want to be on your board uh, because you cannot do this by yourself. Nope. Find people who you want to be on your board of directors. You mm -hmm. have to have a minimum of three people. So an odd number, whether it's three, five, seven, um, and get people who are passionate about what you are doing as well, because you don't want to grab people just to have their names on the board so you can go ahead and get the paperwork signed and, you know, get it done. Tammy said you can get your nonprofit set up in five minutes. It's more like three hours. But as she <laughs> said, it's still very important that you have a solid foundation. Right. Write your mission statement down. Write your vision right. statement down. Write your strategy. Once you start the nonprofit, how will you sustain it? Write the who, what, where, when, and how, all those things. So before you jump out, because it only takes a short time to do the paperwork, yeah. but make sure you have all those things in place. And William's on here too. He's a, a nonprofit consultant as well. Great. Um, Todd just said she learned so much and she's still relevant to new to nonprofit startup, mm -hmm. um, definitely sign up for TechSoup's web, web um, their mm -hmm. newsletters. Again, they, there's a seminar or a webinar, there's something, and there's some, a lot of things are already pre-recorded that you can go in. Um, this is, this is um, I'm telling you, a wealth of knowledge and a, a lot of free information. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah, I, and, and the one that was starting your nonprofit as Aretha said, you know, making sure that you find the people that are passionate, just as passionate as you are, is so important, especially your board, because when you're starting to you're build out your board, you're looking for people that want to fundraise for you, that has been successful in the past of fundraising, and making sure that you are still the CEO or the executive director of that um, board, and they are going alongside you and not trying to change your mission or change your passion of what you're doing. So that's so important that you're finding the right people for your board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there any other questions? I wanna thank you guys for coming on at night. This is great. So, cause I'm always, you know, trying to play around with the time whether we wanna do morning, midday. So this is the first one we've had this late at night. So thank you, um, Billy, what work is done in the USA on the co-op and the multi mutual mutual businesses. mutual businesses. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. Of that. Not sure. Cooperative mutual businesses. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
Um, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, you everybody for joining us. Um, uh, Billy, you can email me in the um, in the meetup. And again, everybody's gonna get this. Thank you so much for joining from London. Thank you, Honduras, Maryland, Orlando, um, Oklahoma, Canada, we, we, Orlando, <laughs> we've all over the place. Thank you until next time. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody saying good night. I appreciate you all. Uh, I know you learned, a lot. I learned a lot tonight. And again, um, sign up for the next one. We have April 10th, um, social media tune up and I will see you soon. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, William at Global Force Trainers.